If you haven't noticed, I've been getting really into the fusion page of DaVinci Resolve lately and really in to VFX and the further down that rabbit hole I go, the more I learn about what it takes to actually make a VFX shot look good. So today I want to share with you six tips that I've learned about making VFX shots look more realistic. And I'm going to show you the tools in DaVinci Resolve that'll help you get that done. But before we get into that, let me know in the comments, what's your number one tip for getting good VFX shots? Let's start a conversation. Now, before we actually dive into DaVinci Resolve, we need to have a little conversation about what our goal here is actually, because contrary to popular belief and what the title says, our goal is not to make our VFX shots look real. It's to make them look like they were shot on the same camera and the same lens at the same time as our original footage. To do this, we need to think about two things. First, we need to think about how our VFX elements would affect the environment. Would they produce heat? Would they emit light? Would they push something out of the way? You get the idea. The second thing to think about is how the lens on our camera, the same lens that shot our original footage, would react to those elements. For example, if you shot on an anamorphic lens and your VFX element emits light, then you're likely to have a lens flare. Or if your VFX element is in the background and you filmed wide open, then that element will likely be out of focus. And with all of that out of the way, now that our thought process is down, now that we're in the right headspace, let's jump into our first tip, which is motion blur. Whenever you have movement captured by a camera, especially at the typical frame rates of 24, 25, 30, whatever, you're going to have some form of motion blur. And if you are doing a fusion composition or any VFX composition, then any animated elements in that composition should also have that same motion blur. Otherwise, Otherwise, it doesn't look right. Just like this shot of me shooting the fireball at the UFO, this doesn't have motion blur on it yet. It looks horrible. We need to fix it. There's a few ways in DaVinci Resolve to get motion blur, or there's a lot of nodes that will allow you to add motion blur, but the most typical way to do it is through a transform node or a merge node. To add motion blur, simply click on either the transform node or the merge node associated with your element, and then head over to the inspector and click settings. Check the box marked motion blur, change the quality to between five and 10. The faster the motion, the higher the number. That's the general rule. Make sure your shutter angle matches the shutter angle of the in-camera footage and you're done. Now your VFX elements will have the same natural looking motion blur. Next up, let's talk about lighting. Lighting is super important when it comes to filming. We all know this, but it's also super important when it comes to visual effects. Basically, if you have any elements in your composition that are supposed to emit light, then you should account for that. Same thing with shadows. If something would be blocking the sun, then you should have a shadow underneath it. And while the best way to do this would be practically with real lighting while you're filming, there are ways to fake light in DaVinci Resolve. For example, this clip with the energy ball has no lighting added whatsoever, and it just looks like there's a VFX element stuck on top of a piece of footage. Adding some lighting will make that look a little bit more natural. To do this, we'll add a color corrector node to the node of me standing there with my hand out. From there, we'll add a mask around the energy ball and soften the edge. Now, when we actually turn our light on, it will be a nice natural fall off. The next step is to actually create the light and we're gonna use a probe modifier on our color corrector in order to do that. First, we'll click on our color correction node, right click on strength and choose modify with probe. Then we'll head over to the modifiers tab. Next, we'll drag the energy ball node into the image to probe box, select probe rectangle and click and drag the center point on the probe around the image until you get a light color that you're happy with and you're done. Quick side note, if the elements that actually emit the light are animated, then you should track your mask with those elements. The next tool that I want to talk about is called Displace. And Displace is a super, super handy tool, especially if you have visual effects elements that would normally emit heat, like fire, or in our case, energy balls. What Displace does is it warps an image based on the data from a source image. And I know that sounds confusing, but basically what we're going for here is a subtle heat wave effect. Let's take a look at the close-up shot with 
the energy ball. I've already got my lights set up and everything's tracked, so the only thing left to do is add our heat waves. To do this, we'll add a displace node in between media in one and our tracker. Displace uses data from the foreground input to generate the displacement, so we'll connect the energy ball's transform node to the foreground input. Then in the inspector, we'll tweak the refraction strength and light power until we get a look that we like. It's a really subtle effect for sure, but it does add a little bit of depth to our image. The next tip is to match movement with all of the elements in your composition. This is super important, especially when you're adding 3D effects or 2D effects, or in our case, replacing a sky. In this clip, I've replaced the sky, which was a boring solid blue color with a gloomy gray sky from Unsplash. The only problem is this shot is handheld and the sky is just a JPEG. So when I play through the clip, it looks, well, really bad. To fix this, we'll head to the Fusion page, select the merge node that connects the sky to the composition, right click on the center point in the video and choose Merge One Center, Modify With, Tracker, Position. From there, we'll open up the Modifiers tab in the Inspector and drag our Media In 2 node to the Tracker Source section in the Modifier. This tells the Modifier that we are tracking the shot of the houses. Next, we'll set our tracking point over a high contrast point in our clip and begin the track. And now when we play that back, we can see the sky and the houses are moving together. We've got a couple more tips to go over, but before we get into that, let me know, are you enjoying this video? You can tell me by hitting that like button below this video. And if you want to see more content like this, you can let me know by subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell so you don't miss anything. Or at least hopefully you won't miss anything. It, YouTube's weird. Sometimes it just doesn't send out the notifications. I don't know what it's all about. Let's get back to the video. Next up is color matching. Remember, when you're doing VFX compositions, the goal is to make everything look like it was filmed with the same camera and the same lens at the same time. And a big part of that is matching colors and contrast and overall brightness with all of the elements in your scene. Take the shot that we were working on earlier. Now we've not only got a sky replacement, but we've got some additional clouds and a UFO. The only problem is those clouds and the UFO aren't color matched and they look absolutely horrible. To fix this, we'll add a color corrector node to one of our cloud nodes. Then in options, we'll check the box marked pre-divide post multiply. This tells Resolve that this color corrector node will only apply to to that single cloud. We'll then use that color corrector to tweak the hue, contrast, and lightness until it matches the rest of the sky. Then we'll copy that color corrector node and paste it onto all of the other clouds. And to blend it a little bit more, we'll add a blur node to the cloud in the back and change the opacity of all of the clouds to 0.5. And now that the clouds are done, we can add a color corrector node to the UFO and tweak that until it looks like it belongs in the shot. And when we're all said and done, we can put a final grade on the composition in the color page to get our look. Now, those last five tips were all about how to make your VFX compositions look real, but there's another big element that we haven't talked about yet, and that's how it sounds. Honestly, the way that sound affects what you see when you're watching a video is absolutely incredible, which is why my sixth and final tip for this video is to use sound design. The sketch that you watched at the beginning of this video has a ton of sound design in it. In fact, almost everything you hear in that sketch is some sort of music or sound effect, and I got them all from today's sponsor, Artlist. I've been using Artlist to get all of the music and sound effects for my videos for a while. They really do have a huge selection of high quality music in just about any genre that you can think of. Their sound effects are high quality as well, and you can find just about anything you need. And with their unlimited license, I can use their music and sound effects on any project that I want, whether it's on social media or client work or whatever. They also have a personal plan that'll cover you for all of social media and YouTube. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money or you just don't need music and sound effects for professional work, there you go. One of my favorite things about Artlist is their For You page where I can go and find tracks that Artlist thinks I'll like based on things that I've downloaded before. In fact, most of the music that you hear in my YouTube videos are from that page. Artlist will be linked below if you want to check them out. And if you sign up using that link, you'll actually get two free months on top of your annual subscription. Thanks so much Artlist for sponsoring this video and for continuing to support creators like me. Now let's get back into it. Now, if you're like I was just a few short months ago, then you're probably sitting there thinking, you know, this is all well and good and it looks cool, but I still have no idea how to use Fusion. That's okay. I totally get that. 
I understand. That's exactly why I made this video right here. You should go check it out. Thanks for watching.